one thousand. Keep it one thousand. Keep it a stack. Keep it a stack. We kill one thousand. Kill one thousand. It's deeper than rap. It's deeper than rap. It's the keep it one thousand podcast. It do not stop. It's the keep it one thousand podcast. It do not stop with me. Keep it. This is the keep it one thousand podcast. We are gonna keep it all the way a stack. And I'm your host, Kill One Triple Zero. And as you can see, it do not stop. It do not stop with me. And I got a special guest in the building, man. An advocate for local artists. Broke a lot of big records. Baton Rouge legend. Radio legend. DJ your boy Earl in the building, man. What up? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? We got to get the sound effects so let's doing it. Start doing all the clapping and stuff. Oh, we'll deal with coming. you, boss. It's coming, man. Shit, man. <laughs> Glad to have you on the show, man. I'm just steady pushing, man, grinding, you know? But we're going to get right into it, man. So, you from Baton Rouge or? Uh, a little bit of everywhere, man. I went to like six different high schools in three different states. So, I'm really a mutt, but I, I claim Baton Rouge because I went to college uh, in Baton Rouge and then I just stayed, you know, and the city kind of adapted me. Right, right. So how was it coming up in Baton Rouge and some of those cities you grew up in? Um, shoot, I come from, you know, the same single parent home everybody else um come from, you know, uh mom grinding, trying to take care of all of us and me and my me and my sister and my brother. Um and uh graduated high school, went to Southern University, um, yes, learned radio. You know, right. and I got my first radio job at 18. 18. So, yeah, so I was going to Southern and um, doing radio every weekend in Shreveport. So I would leave uh, Southern Friday morning, go check in on my radio show for the weekend on Friday in Shreveport, go on the radio all weekend and help co-host a TV show. And then uh, I'd be back at Southern in Baton Rouge on Sunday. And I did that for probably like my first two and a half years of college. Right. And then um, I got my job at Max 94.1 on the radio in Baton Rouge. And Ooh. then it was like, take off from there, you know? So you started off with uh, A Bay Bay in Shreveport, right? Yeah, well, when I wasn't a, I wasn't a, a radio jock, Bay Bay was already like radio jock. I was just kind of high schooler, high school hooper, you know? Mm -hmm. But when I went to college, um, that's when I kind of, I, I decided I was going to get into mass communications. And... Um, mm -hmm. That's when I really got into DJing. I was a radio jock before I was a DJ. Most um, most DJs be DJs and then they turn a uh, radio jock, but I was uh, the opposite. I was always a radio personality. I always wanted to be a radio personality. I never even really thought about um, the DJ world. I'm not even really like a music lover or nothing like that. I was a broadcaster. Right. And the broadcast brought me to DJing, and then the DJing brought me to help and manage artists, and then I actually was really good at it. So I just got deeper and deeper into it. Now I don't even really touch turntables too much. I just uh, deal in the radio world and you know on the business side. Definitely, definitely. So the Kevin Gates dead game situation, man. How you meet Kevin Gates, and how did that situation come about? Well, I was already um hottest DJ in the city, throwing all the biggest parties. Um, I was on the LPFM radio station. So um, my partner was a promoter. His name was Rashad Cave, uh, R Cave man on Instagram. But he was my roommate in uh in college, mm -hmm. and um, he started throwing parties. So he was the promoter, and the promoter and the DJ were basically roommates. And right. so since he started throwing parties, he hooked up with this dude named Jason Hughes that was uh, that owned the club. And Jason Hughes' homeboy was uh, a popular D-boy in the city. You know, uh, 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 a big, big money, big money investor, uh, a big money investor in the city. Right. And so we're always hanging out in the club atmosphere, uh, a guy named Travis. And so Travis was like, man, I'm starting a record label with my uncle. And uh, I want you to help me out with it, you and Rashad. And so it was like, cool, because we always we were always hanging out together anyway. And right. we was always friends first. And uh, when he started um, the Dead Game, uh, he started Dead Game Records. He had this artist named Kevin Gates. And it's, a, it's real easy 
to promote an artist when one of your best friends is a club owner, your other best friend is a promoter, and your other best friend is a um, is a radio jock. So yeah. you could imagine all of the people that you normally would have to pay, you don't have to pay because they're your homeboys and they got right. skill sets. So you ain't got to pay for no graphic design because your homeboy is a graphic designer. You ain't got to pay for no radio spins because your homeboy is the radio jock. You ain't got to worry about your music getting hot in the club because one of the hottest club promoters is your homeboy. You ain't got to worry about finding a venue or a club because your other homeboy is a club owner. So all of the pieces really kind of just came together and uh, Travis was really, it was really genius mastermind for putting together such a great team because right. pretty much everything that, that Kevin needed in order to make it was already there. You know, a lot of times artists talk about how hard they had to work to make it. Oh, I had to, I had to grind my ass off on my own and all of that shit. Man, Kevin Gates, everything was laid out for him. You know, he had an apartment paid for, uh, he had a car, record label paid for, brand new bins that the record label had paid for. Right. He didn't have to pay for no radio spins. He didn't have to pay for no club spins. He didn't have to fight for no shows because he had a real uh, engaged CEO that um, that put all of the pieces together in order for his, his success to come into play. Like, I don't think there's a rapper um, in the history of probably Louisiana or the whole rap game that had as much help to make it as Kevin Gates did. I mean, with the help surrounding him, I mean, that was like opportunity, you know, but you wouldn't call it season the opportunity, season the moment. I mean, he did, you know, put in work, but you know, everything. Well, was when you talk out. about seizing, you talk about seizing the moment. I mean, the moment was so laid out and perfect that there really wasn't much to seize. It was just really just going to do what everybody told you to do. You know, the biggest problem with a lot of artists today is that they don't know what to do. They don't know how. They don't know what direction to even travel in. You right. know, so uh, I've just been blessed that I've, I've had a grasp and an understanding of the music business on the national level. So all I do is duplicate national music industry principles on the local level. And once I start grinding, just like the way that the real life music business grinds, but I just duplicate it on the smaller local level, it always happens. You're going directly to the check. You know, right. a lot of artists don't understand that you're supposed to be making money right now. You ain't got to right. wait till later on to make money. You make money probably like five, seven, ten different ways in the music business. And if you're not attacking and trying to make money in all of the different ways that you make money in the music business, you're really just wasting your time. Right. You know? There's a right way that we run music careers. You got the and since there's a right way to do it, I grab rappers, we start doing it the right way. They get six figure and multi million dollar opportunities. And, you know, after a while, I think people are gonna start realizing and understanding that I'm not getting lucky with this shit, you know? Right. Definitely. So, how people can get in touch with you for management, consultation, whatever. Network. Uh, my website, New Power for All and New Power Classics, and on Instagram. I'm not like, the bougie DJs that 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 y'all probably used to dealing with, I answer every single DM. I get with you. I have the management, the greatest management uh, system ever. Hey, he do, man. He got right back with me, man. We made it happen, man. You did keep it one thousand with me. So yeah, the manage the management structure that I got now is so perfect. It doesn't matter what artist, it doesn't matter what business that you're in. You can come in and get the help that you need with me and my team now with New Power, uh, New Power for All. Right. We got I got a great staff of A and Rs. I got a great staff of photographers, um, great staff of managers, and so we help all artists. And the reason, right. the, Earl, you've been you broke so many artists. Why you don't take a record label job? Why you don't start your own record label? And that's the reason why I called the the company New Power for, for All is because I want everyone to understand that. It's for everybody. If you got dreams and you got music that you're trying to get and expose to the world, or you got talents that you're trying to turn into a business, we're here to help you and we educate you first. So the first thing is we teach you the whole business. So you understand publishing, you understand how you get paid for everything. You understand all the ways that you get paid. You understand how to write shit off on your taxes. So you're in business. 
And then the second thing we do is we, we plan. So every single artist, uh, they have a, uh, a, a, a album that they need to drop. They got a single that they're trying to release. So we need to put together a long list of things that we do after their single drops in order to make it successful. And we need to put together a long ass list of things that we're gonna do in order to make sure that that album is successful. Right. So we plan. So we put together a dope strategic plan of things that you need to do in the streets, in the physical world, not on the internet and shit, in the real life physical world, the things that you need to do. And then we help you execute it and we keep up with you on it. So, so mystical say 90% 90, 90 of this shit is your business, 10% of this shit is your talent. So 90% of this shit is your business, like talent alone can't get you there. Yeah, and because the reason being is because they say 90% of it is is business is because there's a lot of talented people, man. I I meet I meet artists. I was at an artist showcase in San Marcos last night. It was a it was a young blue show and they had so many artists performing, it felt like it was a damn artist showcase. Right. But I saw so much talent and so many different types of talent. Like if I put a microphone in the middle of the room in the hood and told everybody to go rap on it or sing on it, you're going to have people that are awesome. You're going to have people that are amazing. You're going to have people that suck. You're going to have people that aren't ready. You're going to have people that you're going to want to follow on social media. You're going to have people who you're going to want to pay for features. Right. You might even have somebody you want to come perform at your birthday party. But that's what's beautiful about this game is because there's so many different talented people in so many different types of ways. But if you don't know how to turn that into a business, you don't get paid. Everyone knows, oh, you get paid when your song gets played on the radio. Right. Oh, you get paid when your song when when your song gets played in a Spider-Man movie or something. So how the hell does that work? You know, what are the details to that? Royalties, how do I get that checked them out? You have to be registered. I know a list of them, but I know you guru brand. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you gotta have your publishing straight. Everybody has their distribution straight. So they got their distro kid or their tune core, their United Masters. So they up on iTunes and all that stuff. They making money, so they're happy. But mm -hmm. that's just one of the smallest checks that you could get. You right. know, everyone's focused. Everybody, I was listening. The biggest, the biggest thing that I fight every single day is the miscommunications and the misconceptions about the music business. Mm -hmm. Like they say, oh, it's not an album selling game; it's a streaming game now. Well, if you commit to saying that it's a streaming game and you're focused on your streams because they told you to, and somebody you heard someone say that, right? You're completely lost. Off of a million streams on Spotify, you only get paid thirty five hundred bucks. Thirty five hundred, y'all heard million it so streams. Thirty five hundred more avenues in your music in your business, man. A income, thirty five hundred. So right now, the biggest the biggest misconception in the game is, oh, we trying to get people to stream. We trying to get people to stream. We trying to get people to stream. So you fighting hard for your million streams so you can make thirty five hundred dollars. Thirty five hundred, four, and still be in the hood, you know. So right. there's a lot of other ways that you get paid other than your streams and i teach you all of that off of your publishing off of your song trust off of your sound exchange so like there's a lot of different ways that artists get paid but they don't even know and understand the ways that they get paid or they don't even understand that they need me like my new phrase and my new saying is the streets need me the right. streets need me the streets need me and when people say that oh, the streets need me we don't need nobody blah, 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 blah. but the reason that i say it is because they don't know the business if I run across a hundred artists, a hundred of them, 99.5 of them don't know the whole business. You right. might be 0.5 that know a small percentage, right. but the education gap, the music business is the only business that people get into and start investing in. And they don't know shit about the business and or how to get paid. You're right. You're right. So my goal and my dream and what I've dedicated my life to at this point is educating artists and trying to stop all of the robbery that's going on in the music business from our people, you know? And mm. I'm not the woke, ethnocentric dude, mm. but you got billions of dollars that's been stolen from the black community, billions. You got millions, you got, you got multiple millionaires that would have been generated in our community, multiple businesses that would have been open outside of the music business, multiple families and lives that have been blessed if a lot of these artists and these rappers and these singers aren't getting robbed out of their money. 
Exactly. And they've been getting robbed for so long and it's still happening every day. It's almost crazy. They put a stop to everything. They stop in Asian hate. They stop in racism. They stop in uh, 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 trafficking, human trafficking. They're, they're doing all of these things and all these initiatives to stop these ways that these evil people have put leverage on us right. in the world. But the one way that they haven't is this music business, you know? Exactly. That's so the what, one way. I, I hear about advances and deals and the 360 come up a lot. What 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 is the 360 deal and what is the advance? Do they pay that money back? How that go? Well, quick gem on that. Well, well, quick gem, okay, so breaking up the two, 360 advances. So quick knowledge from DJ Earl on advances is the biggest misconception on advances is, man, don't take all that money from the record label. It's recoupable. They can get that money back. That's the biggest misconception ever. And a lot of the misconceptions that are in the industry and a lot of the misknowledges and stuff and miseducations that are put in the music industry are put in by the record label. Right. You know? So, so if I'm going into a, go ahead. Yeah, if I'm going into a record label, what do I need? I need help with my career. I might not even need money because I'm getting paid for shows and stuff at this point. So I'm getting paid $3,500 a show. You know, rappers like TEC, rappers like Level, rappers like Fox, rappers like Mouse, they're not broke. They're right. making thousands of dollars. But how do I get to the point where I take my career to the next level? Locally, you're getting your music played on four radio stations to drop your album. Locally, you're getting three or four clubs to play your music before you drop your album. Locally, you putting a hundred posters up and putting your CD available for sale in three to five locations in your city. So you're running your record label just on a small level. So you're getting that small uh, rewards. It's like the blackjack table. Um, you bet big, you win big. You bet big, you lose big. So if I'm at the table where all everybody in the music business is playing the same game. Every a &R, every record label, every uh, industry person, we're all playing the exact same game. We're all playing the exact same game in the music business. It's like blackjack. So everybody wins. I get paid $5. You get paid $100 because I bet and invested $5 into an album and you invested $100 into an album. Exactly. I win in the music game locally because I got my music playing in Shreveport, Alexandria, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans. I got four radio stations playing my game. You, you the record label. You pay two hundred thousand to pay the that, that single played on the radio nationwide. So Every single time they turn that's on a the big radio thing too. A lot of artists think so. You can't get your song on the radio if it's hot for free. There's no way to get it on the radio for free. Nah, no way. Paying for radio, but paying for radio, buying and purchasing and selling radio. If I'm selling you radio spins or if I'm purchasing radio spins, it's a federal crime. 100% illegal. It's called payola, right? Mm -hmm. But you're not going to get no music played on the radio unless you got a budget and you know somebody that you can trust. So paying for radio is a federal crime. What? So since paying for radio is a federal crime, it's just like buying kilos. There's only so many kilos available because there's only a certain amount of time on the radio. Mm. So in an hour, I only can play X amount of songs. So that means I only have X amount of songs for sale. Man, I ain't lying, these jewels. Yeah, so if radio has inventory and I don't even have enough spins to, to give you because the record label done paid me already for all of these spins, so where do you fall? Yeah, I get it now, man. And, 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 and am I going to talk to Lil Rapper Ray Ray on the streets coming up to me saying, hey, man, Earl, can you play my song on the radio seven times a week? Radio, just so everybody knows, radio is purchased by spins per week. Spins per week. Pay my song seven times a week. Play my song 14 times a week for about, about 45 days, for about a month and a half, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how radio is purchased. But like I said, radio, purchasing radio is illegal. So... It's like buying kilos. You know if that. you don't have a plug, you can't, you can't get on get, the radio. You can't get in. You got to have a plug. So who are your plugs? Plugs are people that they know that the radio business and people in the radio world know that aren't rats. Hmm. So how do you know if someone's not a rat or not? 
the time that they've been in the game, the people that they know. You might need a plug through somebody else, you know? So you gotta have a plug. DJ Earl is a plug. When songs get played on the radio, we don't just say, oh, Beyonce just dropped her new album. We love number six on Beyonce's album. We're gonna play the hell out of this. The fans are gonna love it. It don't work like that. It's business. It's Man. business. The only reason we play number six on Beyonce's album is because the record label paid us to play Popped number six X amount of times a week. So Man. all of the radio stations in the world are owned by like three people. It's like two brothers and a cousin, right? So there's a huge monopoly on radio. So when I say that the check is get pet cut for $200,000 to get your song played on the radio nationwide every time the, uh, the, they turn on the radio, who's going to pay for that? Mm. Are you going to pay your own $200,000? And that's gonna... a big question in, in uh, Baton Rouge. Like, man, why uh, Max 94.1 don't play Baton Rouge music? Like, a lot of people say that. Because I left? Because you, yeah. I was the only one that could play it. Salute to you for boss. doing that. Salute yeah, to you, man. My boss allowed me, you know? And every radio spin is tracked. So every radio spin, every time your song plays on the radio is tracked through BDS Media, in media, media Base. So I know how many times my song is played. So if I pay you for 10 spins a week, I check my BDS, I see only got seven, right? Mm. What's up, DJ Earl at the radio station, man? I appreciate those seven spins you gave me last week, brother. I really appreciate those. Catch me up them three spins that you shorted me this week and try to get them in a better time slot because you playing my shit overnight at 4 a.m. Because BDS is your tracker. It allows you to, to see when, where, how many times your song was played, in some situations, even how long they played the song before they cut it off. So, right. Paying DJs is not, most, most artists don't even know that paying DJs is, um, is trackable, you know? You just don't pay DJs to play your record and just cross your fingers and hope they play it. Right. You register your song with BDS and then you can track your song. Yes, everything is business in this business, right? So going back to, so all of that being said, the advance, the biggest misconception is don't take all that money, the record label, you're going to owe it back to the record label. But as an investor, if you want to take as much money from the record label as possible, the reason being is because the more money that they give you, the more they believe in you. The more money that they give you, the more money that they have to work hard to try to get back. Mm. So do I need money from the record label if I'm level or mouse or any of them? No, I already got money. Right. I'm getting paid about $1,500 a show. I'm getting paid three shows a week. I'm getting paid $3,500. I'm getting three shows a week. But that's not enough money to decide that I'm going to pick my own $200,000 up on the radio. Exactly. That doesn't mean that I'm going to pay $50,000 of my own cash to, for the little baby feature. That doesn't mean that I'm going to pay uh, my own money for my Zaytoven beat, for my... Uh, whoever in the industry is the biggest person in the industry's beat. Right. So you take all the money that you could possibly get from them people because now those people are going to work harder for you than anything else. You got, you're a record label. You got two artists signed. One artist came into your office saying, man, I got my shit rolling. I got a good team. I don't need that much money from the record label. All I need is distribution. I'm going to give y'all 20%. So we got one artist, we're making 20% of his career. We got another artist, we're making 90% of his career, and we gave him $2 million. Mm, mm, mm. Who is the record label going to work harder for? The nigga that we got the biggest percentage of and the one that we gave the most money to. Right, exactly. So when a record label comes to the table half-assed and they don't offer you a lot of money up front, that means they don't believe in you that much. Exactly. The more money you get is the harder they're going to work for you to get it back. That's their investment. So, yes. So you yeah. take all the money that them people possibly that you can get out of them people for an advantage. And yes, it is recoupable. But guess who's trying to recoup it? Not you. The record label is trying to recoup that money. Exactly. Because they got to work hard to get that money back. So they're going to push You're you out. Off. Yeah. Once you sign over, they okay, they give it. They gave NBA Youngboy $2 million up front. Mm. 
Now we got to work our ass off to get that $2 million back. Right. You don't want the record label just sitting around like, oh, we only got 20% of his career. Let's make a few phone calls for him and let's go. Let's right. do his thing. You don't need money from the label. You need their resources. So now, now that you know, so why is radio important? Why is social media important? Why are all these outlets important? Because now there's a bunch of artists. Every artist that I meet has a bunch of amazing music. They got all of this dope ad music that they need to get into people's ears. Mm -hmm. So how do I get this amazing music into people's ears? I posted it up on my social media. That wasn't enough. Nah. I put my video up on YouTube and I posted it. I don't got no views. That ain't going to get it. That ain't going to get it. So now you need a long ass list of things that you're going to do to get into those people's ears. The Earl Illuminati mm. is the group of people who control your ears. We didn't know nothing about no baby. We didn't know nothing about Megan Thee Stallion. Right. And all of a sudden, now you know her song. Now you know the baby song. You never Googled these people. You never searched for their song on YouTube. So how did this music get into your ears? It was Someone controls your ears. So you know these people now that you didn't know before for a reason, because we paid to put these people in your face. We paid the Earl Illuminati to put these people in your face. We paid the Earl Illuminati to put this music in your ears. So now as a record label, if you control or you know the people who control the majority of people's ears, when we, brought, when we, when we drop a single in a real life music business, we know that the single is going to get into everyone's ears. Right. We know that the single is going to get listened to. We know the single is going to go viral. Right. Stuff doesn't go viral on accident. We pay for stuff to go viral. On purpose, yep. We pay those radio stations so every time they turn on a radio station, you hear that song. Exactly. So Then it brainwash you. Even if you don't like the song, you hear it so much, you singing it now. Exactly. Yeah. And because those outlets are the people who control people's ears. So if you control those outlets and the people who control those outlets and have a relationship with the people who control those people's ears, then you're in. Damn. There is no independent record business. There isn't one. Man. Well, I got a segment in my show, man, where I say it's time to keep it 1,000. And I'm giving free promo to anybody who's doing anything, any business. Just leave a uh, hey, brief comment, you can't uh, beat description of what you got going on, and I'm going to shout you out. It's simple as that. It don't take but a second to keep it a stack. So yeah. hey, today's shout out goes to AJ on the track. Got them five beats, man. Young producer. If you're looking for that heat, holler at AJ on the track. Some of his credits, NBA Young Boy, Fred O'Bang, Spitter, Fox, YBZ, many, many more. Y'all go follow AJ on the track beats, man, at AJ on the track beats. That's how that go. Shout out to AJ on the track, bro. Like, I ain't met him, but New Power is for all. So New Power is for him, too. Uh, he hollered at you. And now you helping him advertise. The yeah. more and more people that he meets like you, and the more and more um, Green the more on. and more outlets, oh, yeah. the more and more outlets to individuals that he runs across, the more beats he's gonna sell. Actually, New I bumped into him, and we 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 clicked. Like I've been I've been I've been you know really all my music been coming from his beat. Like seriously, every, I'm, st I'm stuck on his sound. He need new power. Yeah. Because exactly. every single time. I want to see him make it. Even you. Every time you play his beat, he can get paid for that. So every single time anyone listens to a beat that AJ makes, he's supposed to get a check in the mail for it. Oh, we need to we need to set that up. AJ, we're going to get you to holler at Earl. And then, yeah, man, because he got the jewels. He got the blueprint. Yeah, because everybody, everybody in the industry has a business. Everybody in this world has a talent, you know. And as as Black Americans and 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 and, and being snatched from our ancestors and from our homeland uh, here in America, we don't know how to connect what we're good at naturally. Our skill set inside of us is the same skill set that our ancestors had. Right. You know, our my daddy was the same way I am, talking ass Nick. You know, <laughs> his daddy was a talking ass nigga and an organization and a management ass nigga. So yeah. when we got stripped from our ancestry in Africa and brought out here, we didn't understand how our ancestors connected our skill set and our talents 
to make money and be successful in the real world. Mm. Man. So you're talented. You know that you like media. So you just around here in the world trying to figure out how to connect your skills to this. Yeah. Chances are, if you would have known your grandfather's 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 grandfather, you probably would have been a broadcaster somewhere. You probably already. would have been, you would have already been in a position because you would have known how what you're good at attaches to the real world. So every single African American on this planet was born with all of the wealth and all of the, 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 the luxury of the world, all the medicine, all the animals, all the gold, all the jewelry, all the diamonds, all the precious stones were, 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 we were born on top of that land. Right. We were God's chosen people. We're the ones who got all the gold. We're the ones who got all the diamonds. God put all of that underneath our feet. Also, along with that, we're bigger History. and stronger. You feel me? History. We got, we got a big heart that allows us to rule because we're not selfish. We can think of other people and consider other people. Right. So God has blessed us with all of these talents. So how do we connect these talents into the real world? That's what new power is for. We're helping people connect their got talents. A special guest in the building. Oh yeah, I got three. <laughs> How many you got? I got three, man. Okay, I got three girls, bro. Oh yeah, I got two girls and a boy. Hey, yeah, that's why. That's why I'm focused on the women so much is because I think women are gonna run the whole planet next. Won't ever give up clothing brand. W-E-G-U, one of the hottest trends in fashion. Wear your motivation and style. And yes, we also have styles for the kids. This your boy, Kel 1000, creator of Won't Ever Give Up Clothing Brand, uh -huh. W-E-G-U. We go. You know, in life, sometimes it get hard to stay motivated. Definitely. Why not wear your motivation and style? Get at me for the sauce. Don't forget to follow on Instagram at w.e.g.u. Mob ties, man. I see you in the rap a lot camp, man. And uh, what what was Marley G like? Um, um, Marley G, I grabbed when he was in high school, coming out of damn middle school, mm. and he was just another young guy in Louisiana trying to find his way. And he reached out to DJ Earl because he knew I had the platform and I I work with artists and stuff. And so I hosted his his first first mixtape. And with my mixtapes and with my, um, with my help, I empower you knowledge wise. So you're actually working the way that the real life music business works. Right. So Marley was a high schooler with his posters. Marley was a high schooler with his flyers. He was a high schooler with his own hard copies. He was mm. throwing his own events. He was throwing his own shows. Dang, so, he was pushing. Yeah, so Marley was actually running a real life record label signed to himself running his own career the way that we run real music business careers he was marketing and advertising products albums he was releasing singles to advertise those albums he was really running his campaign and the best that he could so from even doing and running a music business the right way even halfway on your own someone is gonna see your talents. Your talents are gonna bring you amongst great men. Right. So Marley G grinding on his own, doing his own thing. I moved to Houston. Marley come down, was coming down to Houston to come visit me all the time. I was over there with a uh, Doughboy Sauce and the Sauce Wave and stuff when I first came to Houston. And um, Marley even came over to the Sauce Studio and shot a cipher with me. And he was grinding in Houston. Next thing I know. He bumps into Jay Prince Jr. Jay Prince Jr. takes a liking to him and pretty much signs him, takes him under his wing, starts helping him with his finances, starts helping him with his living arrangements, mm. starts getting him the studio time, really starts taking an impact and taking uh, Marley's life. So thus, Marley brings me to rap a lot with him um, and introduces me to Jr. and the Prince family. And, you know, they kind of embrace me and took me in and showed me so much love ever since. Right. And uh, me and Junior was working Marley for probably about two or three years. And then um, he ended up uh, passing away. But- yeah, man. Rest in peace, um, Marley G, man. Yeah, but the rap -a -lot situation, I absolutely um, am so appreciative of, of J Prince Junior and Prince family for, for, let, for allowing me to come in and, um, 
and just work and, and have, have a group of friends and network and meet new people. They let me throw my seminars and my conferences at the studio for the love. You know, they only be taxing me or nothing to use the studio whenever I need it. Any artists that I got, you know, they Rudy at Rap A Lot give me free uh, studio time. So, you know, I've been a and at Rap A Lot probably for about maybe about four years now. Really? And um, yeah, and I haven't I haven't found any new artists to bring over there yet. But, um, you know, it's just been it's been I, I can't I can't thank everybody at Rap A Lot enough for embracing me so much since I've been in Houston and treating me like family you know they treat me just like a guy who's been around forever you know drake concert came along i went to a lot of the concerts and stuff rich art backstage hanging with the family you right. know and it was different for me coming to houston because all i'm used to is haters like in louisiana even the people that love you shoot you and kill you and rob you if they feel like crabs you in a bucket man you know it really is crabs so, in a bucket yeah so that brotherhood that i found at rap is like it was it changed my whole mentality and it made me actually love black people more, you know, because it was a point where I started just not liking people at all, especially not black people, just because I dealt with so much just foolishness and, you know, they treat you horrible in Baton Rouge, you know, once, once you, they'll love you enough to come up and get rich, but then they, they want you to get up out their face with all that fame and celebrity shit and all that riches and all that diamonds, but they ain't got shit. Right. They don't want you to be around there shining and shit with that shit. So, they ended up hating on you once you do get on. But I just, I thank God that I was blessed enough to leave before I ended up dead or in jail, you know? Man. But I did end up almost in jail for a long time because, you know, I'm not saying what police department in Louisiana or none of that because I don't want no smoke. Right. You know, but, you know, I got pulled over and they planted a scale on me. Oh, man. Come on. You know? They had a case with uh, the corrupt cops in Baton Rouge. It just came out or something like that. I was seeing, I read or whatever. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I got pulled, I had been pulled over. You know, I drove foreign, I got foreign cars and shit in Baton Rouge, nice house and shit. I don't even stay, I ain't stay around no black folks in Baton Rouge. I had to move outside of Baton Rouge just like Boosie and everybody else. So I was on the, the far exits of Baton Rouge. And um, I, got, I, got, I got pulled over. And two days before my celebrity basketball game, and I'm thinking it's in a routine stop. Next thing you know, it's drugs and a scale under mm. my seat. Come on. I ain't never sold they no dope up like or that. nothing like that. They never had up. no scale, you know? And Man. um, I think when they realized who I was, they let me sign out. And when they realized who I was, they dropped the distribution charge, the scale disappeared, and all I had to do was go to a uh, like possession drug abuse uh, class. Right. And uh, I got the hell out of Louisiana. That was it. You know, a lot of people are like, well, why you left Louisiana? I left because everyone leaves when they get to my level of success. Um, Especially all the rappers that got killed in Baton Rouge, man. Golly. But yeah, I mean, long story short, I got targeted by the police, so when I get when I get when I get locked up when I got locked up and I and they, they put me in the, uh, the holding cell. As soon as I walk into the jail, we got him. We got us another one, boys. Oh man, they Get trying. Them locked up at the same time, in the same jail. Case was locked up. Y'all was in the parish. Come on. Not in the parish. We're in Livingston. Livingston. Oh, okay. They take me to Livingston jail. We got him. We got another one. Y'all know DJ your boy Earl. Y'all oh. know DJ your boy Earl. Oh, we don't know DJ your boy Earl. Who's DJ your boy Earl? We got his boy Kevin in the back. Yeah, they talking at you. Yeah, we got Gilliard in the back. We got his boy in the back. So you end up seeing Gates in there? Nah, I was holding cell. I went to holding cell. Um, then they're talking shit. You know, we got him. Uh, they called me in. Let me sign out. Man, boy, I ain't put shit. my belt on. I ain't put my belt on. I ain't, I ain't, I grabbed my belt, grabbed all my shit. I had some Bob Marley rolling papers, right? Uh, they gave me my Bob Marley rolling papers back and everything. I put, I grabbed my shit. Man, I was walking down that dark ass road from Livingston Jail by myself. 
I had my phone. I was like, I told my old lady, come get me right now. Living I'm walking. Still, man. Yeah. I, well, it was over for me. I got a pistol. I got $2,200, $2,200 cash. Mm -hmm. But also, it was two days from my celebrity basketball game. So I got ribbons in my trunk for my celebrity basketball game for the high schoolers. Right. Uh, my high school star game. I got participation trophies. I got medals, you know, for this big high school event. So you ball. So you used to you used to hoop? Yeah, I used to hoop. Yeah, I played the state championship in you Louisiana. Five okay. eight. Okay. Yeah. Ain't nobody I ain't know that. Fair Park High School in Street. I do a little something myself, you know. But, uh, you know, I still got the jumper. Anybody yeah, want to get it, we can get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like everybody else, bro. I still feel like I could have made it to the NBA. You hear me? Right. I actually uh, made the team at Southern my freshman year. Come on. Yeah, so I was hooping at Southern my freshman year, but I was also in the National Guard. Mm. So the National Guard wasn't trying to hear that shit. And I right. wasn't, and, 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 and Coach wasn't trying to hear that shit. Right. And then they had Tolliver on Southern, uh, they had Tolliver on Southern's team. And that nigga is like still like top three all time in turnovers or some shit like that. Damn. But he was the president's son. So there was no sitting him on the bench. So I was about three spots. I was about two two slots down in the guard position. Right. You know, walking on. Right. But uh, so it was like, eh. So I let my hoop dream. I let my hoop dream die. But yeah, I used to do the biggest celebrity basketball game. Probably the biggest science show of unity in Baton Rouge every single year. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody who wanted to kill and 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 kill and and destroy each other and shoot at each other. They'd all drop their beefs for my birthday weekend to come play in the celebrity game. But um, but uh, but yeah, man. Um, so you uh, I mean, you work with a lot of names, man. You know, what's some of the heavy hitters you work with? Shit, damn near everybody. Shit, Lil Wayne probably one of the ones notable. You know, oh. I was working for Lil Wayne when I was working with Kevin and them. Really? Before Kevin even. Met Wayne and them. I was in the earthquake video shoot, the Lil Wayne earthquake video shoot, currency and them. Right. I'm in there holding signs talking about she used to love me. Lil Wayne take my girlfriend in the earthquake music video with Jazzy Faye and them. Right. You'll see me, short Dre Earl. Um, I'm going to have to look that up. Championship bottle poppers video. Right. And they're sitting in the VIP. Championship brain, yeah. Yeah, I'm in that video sitting right next to Birdman in, in the VIP section and, and with Birdman in the video. You know, so I, I I was working with Wayne and them, you know, for a long time. Then I managed Lil Chucky for a while. So I was on America's Most Wanted tour with Young Money for like three years, going to all the cities. It was like the biggest tour in hip hop. That was right. cool. Um, none of the artists that I worked with were big when I started working with them. That's mm. the problem. So like, the Kevin Gates and all of those people of the world, those those people are large and huge now. Um, but I started working with them before anybody on the planet knew who they were. Right. So, um, so I, but I, I'll put Kevin's name in there, Boosie. Um, I walked Boosie into his, his label deal with Badass ENT. Um, uh, got him his label deal, uh, his first one, and got him his first clothing endorsement deals and liquor endorsement deals. And because that was really my lane, you know, TQ was his manager manager because that was his brother. That was the one who was taking all the show deposits and stuff. I was the one working with Boosie every single day, making the phone calls. Look, 8732, we need to come do this photo shoot. Boosie's about to go to jail. The the posters and all the hip hop stores across will help keep his buzz alive. I'm right. going to get on the phone with Kavi. Mm -hmm. Send us some free clothes. Boosie's already wearing your brand. Send us some free clothes. They send in boxes of clothes and shit and doing photo shoot, you know, features, five star shit. Fox and Mill before he signed the Trill Entertainment. Uh, he was just a little fox out of Glen Oaks and his brother cleaned the, the, the radio station up at night because he had a janitorial service. And then his mom used to always get her printing from me for like little police sheriff's ball. So um, Fox, you know, before he got before he got on, I was working with um, with Fox before he signed the trail. Me and Fox still like I ain't talked to Fox in a few years, but I still look at Fox like my brother. You know, we got a real close relationship. Um, Master P, you know, uh, TC and them get signed to Master P. I was working with TC since freaking high school. 
you know, first photo shoot and stuff like that ever. Now he's in his second deal with Empire making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Empire is the new record label that everybody nut hugs because they're the ones who kind of have the most unique way that they're doing the record industry and they're, they're doing distribution on a different level and a different kind of unique way that everyone else is doing things. So now when you meet rappers, all of them say, yeah, you know, I'm about to sign the Empire. It used to be, uh -huh. I'm about to sign the Universal. Yeah, we about to sign the Universal. We about to sign the Universal. Right. Now everyone, all the cap comes from everyone says, I'm about to sign the Empire. So, but guys, the Empire, uh, he's solid. Shout out to Empire Records. They signing a lot of artists and doing a lot of distribution stuff. And that's the new hot label right now. You, you definitely know? the plug. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody, like any record label, I could walk artists through the door at any record label, you know, but a record yeah. deal isn't something that, it's not a gift, you know? Mm -hmm. It's more of a point in your career. There comes a point in your career where you reach a certain height and a certain level of success where it's time to get an investor to start moving higher. Right. So, but like 360 deals, I teach about 360 deals. I teach about, um, cause you know, 360 deals, uh, is just a circle deal. So mm -hmm. it means we make money full circle. So as Kale 1000, if you say, man, I got this big old platform and I'm gonna start managing artists. Are you going to help an artist get paid for shows and not make no money on the shows? No. Are you going to help an artist's album drop and you not make no money on the album? If I'm in, definitely if I'm investing, I got to see something. So since you're helping them make money on the album and you're investing your own personal money into the album, you get paid on album sales. Right. Since you're helping them get famous and they're getting booked in San Diego, California. They've never been to San Diego, California. They don't know nobody in San Diego, California. They're getting booked in Baton Rouge. No, nobody even know them in Baton Rouge. They've never been to Baton Rouge or Louisiana ever. But now we paid and invested our money into getting that song played on the radio every time in San Diego, California. Every time they turn on the radio in San Diego, boom, they hear a song. So now promoters and stuff are gonna call his phone and pay him for a show to come to San Diego, California and right. perform because we paid our money to get him known out there. So as the record label, yes, we deserve a percentage of your show. Okay. So um, we help you get paid. Um, so now you get paid for features. Since your song is on the radio every time they turn on the radio, now artists in different cities want to pay you to be on their song because right. you're famous now because we paid to make you famous. Right. It's all so yes, we need a percentage of those features. So now Walmart calls your phone and says, hey, um, we want you to come be in this Walmart commercial and dance and sing this Walmart jingle for us. The only reason Walmart is paying you is because we paid all of our money to make you famous. To make you famous. For the so I'm going to need a check off of that Walmart check. It's Fair exchange ain't no robbery. It ain't. That's a 360 deal, long story short. But you got to So do every single way you make money full circle, we want to make money too because we're helping you make money that way. No one knows about the Oreo cookie game. So now we got He's somebody famous. Yeah, so now we got niggas wearing Oreo cookie hats, Oreo cookie shirts, Oreo cookie everything. So now they want all of your merchandise. They done took a gun and put it in Michael Jordan's hand on the NBA logo. And they took the biggest logo in the world and used it to advertise a rapper. Right. So, yes, we need money on that logo. Because we're the ones who made that logo hot. Right. We invested millions of dollars into making that logo hot. Now you're using it to make money. I need my percentage off of that also. Exactly. Every time somebody buys that T-shirt, in San Diego, I need my percentage because they wouldn't even know you in San Diego. So I need my percentage off that t-shirt. I need my percentage off that hat sale. So That's a 360 cool. deal from an investor standpoint makes all the sense in the world. It's just a normal business arrangement. Right. To a dumb rapper that's uneducated who knows nothing about the business, who ain't got no money to invest in nobody, they don't understand how investors would get their money back. 
a dumb rapper would say something like, I'm not giving a record label no percentage of my shows. Why would you be stupid enough to say that when a record label put a half a million dollars into your career to make you even get paid for shows? Yeah, that don't make sense at all. Exactly. So anybody who says, oh, I ain't signing no 360 deal. Oh, y'all signing that. You, you got rappers to. like Jay-Z. I love Jay-Z. Biggest fan. I wish I could meet him one day. But he's telling niggas, you, you niggas still signing record deals for real? Yeah. Don't sign no record deal. Guess what Jay-Z signed to? About four record deals. Right. So while he telling niggas not to sign up he signed for record deals, he signed up for record deal. Man. Meek Mill, oh, don't sign to no record deal. Nigga, you signed to like three different record deals. Right. You don't know nothing about the music business. You're not ready. They probably saying that because of their experience. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't getting what they supposed to get. You know, probably they bred it up. Rod, I looked at Rod Wave tour. Um, Rod Wave. I looked at Rod Wave's tour. Rod Wave got like hundred dates on this damn tour, right? This nigga's going to hundred cities. Hundred cities. That means you going to hundred hotel rooms, a hundred venues, a hundred deposits. Ooh. Maybe even a hundred door deals. Rod Wave not calling a hundred venues. They about to get they about to get a lot of that back. Yeah, his homeboys, they don't know a hundred cities and a hundred venues and a hundred DJs and a hundred sound men and a hundred radio stations. They don't know them people. There right. are no independent record labels. Right. The reason being is because you need those people's resources. Exactly. Am I going to spend my own $400,000 getting this music distributed? Or am I going to keep my money in my pocket and let this record label take the risk? Period. Yeah. The only reason why people look at record deals as a bad thing is because they don't understand record deals. They don't know how they work. None of that. Right. You can negotiate every percentage that I just told you about in the 360. You can negotiate how much um, they make off of your t-shirt sales and your, your merchandise. You can negotiate what they give you for your merchandise. Well, look, I need y'all to spend X amount of dollars and I need to make sure my website is rolling for my merch. I need to make sure that I have a spring, summer, winter, and fall collection for my merchandise. I need to make sure that I can, web, I can log in and audit my numbers at any time. So- Y'all hand some gems. Yeah, so everything inside of your 360, you negotiate. So look, we want the record, the big, mean, evil record label wants a percentage of your shows. But guess what we also do for you? They put you you ain't got to worry about booking your flights. You ain't got to worry about booking your hotel room. They booking you in a hotel room that's a kick, though. They booking you in a hotel room that's way out of town somewhere. They booking you in a hotel room in a hole in the wall in the hood somewhere. Uh. You can't get your back in. Last night, I was at the Young Boo show. They gave him 17,500 up front. They owed him another 17,500, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody came to the show. So he don't get that. Get, so he don't, he pulls up to the show. We ain't got your other 17,500, bro. My bad. We're going to try again next time. He leaves. That's how it goes. That's how you it goes. Dang. So whoever gave him the first, so now Young Blue is angry, right? Oh, well, I'm not saying, I didn't see him, so I'm not saying that he was angry or nothing, but so Young Blue's angry. Oh, I don't get my 17. I don't get my back end. I don't get my other 17.5. I'm angry about that. The promoter is angry because he paid $17,000 for nothing. He didn't even have to perform or nothing. Man, it's crazy. So, so all these tools are in your uh, new power classes and how to be a rap star book. Most of them, the classes is in there. The book is a, a wide open understanding. Right. The book is a wide open understanding of, um, of the music. Y'all sure go cop that. Yeah, Where so they, it gives you, you a little it? bit. Of, uh, you can get it on my website, newpowerclasses.com or New Power For All, or you can holler at me and I'll send you a copy. The, you can actually get the book for free on newpowerclasses.com. And I'm going to send you a downloadable copy of the book for free. And um, it's not my memoirs. It's not my life story, no shit like that. It's real life industry knowledge. You know, it has a whole rap label set up in here. 
and tells you all the positions at um, a record label and what the positions are. So you got a bunch of homeboys who want to help you um, with your role. career. Right there. All of the positions that you need to fill at your label, the hierarchy, the structure of it, all of that good stuff in the book. Record label, you walk into the record label, there's a million people in there. Everybody who works at the record label don't mean that they can help you. So it gives you all the positions at the record label and what they are and how they can help. You. Right. So um, just an overall understanding of the music business. My class is the whole music business, the paperwork, all of the paperwork, why you need it, how it connects your publishing, how you get paid, why you get paid, um, the details of the 360, um, artist development is the last part. So it's process, paperwork, and skill set. Skill set, the last part of the class is basically what do I need to be doing every day to get better? What is artist development? What do artist developers do? How do we make artists better? You see artists start with me at one point, and then you see where they end up becoming. They end up becoming the full, they can interview, they can rap live, they can perform, they can do all of that on industry level because all of those different levels are things that people need to be working with you on. Right. Your interview got, got to get better. Your interview has to improve. That's part of something that people train you on. Right. People train you on how to give good interviews. People train you on how to perform well. People train you on all of these different as, uh, avenues and aspects of the business. Right. So, makes perfect. Exactly. So a complete artist can do all of those things. Right. You know, they can speak, they can network, all of that. You look at them artists that I that I deal with, they give the best interviews. You're right. Because they've been trained. So their stage performance, they've been trained. Hell, me and Kevin and DJ Chill were in DJ Chill's garage for months. Practice. After shows. Hey, this worked. After this song cut off and we put this song on, there was a long gap where we weren't saying nothing. We need to cut this song short and, and bring it in right on the verse right here. The energy was good for here and here. And then this song, we brought the energy down. So we're going to take this song out of the show. Everything that an artist says in between, um, in between their, um, their songs, mm -hmm. is all pre-rehearsed. Right. They're supposed to say the exact same thing every single time. So the show is supposed to run clear and smooth all the way through. There's right. never no part where the artist is just standing around, walking back and forth with the mic like, yeah, here we go. Yeah. All that yeah. No. It's right. a real life show in Chisel and it has parts and sections and portions. We're not up there just rapping songs, but you learn those type of things when you start getting paid for shows and promoters start saying, man, you ain't do nothing but go up there and rap your music, you know? Yeah. Certain, certain artists give good shows. You have certain to put artists on the show. Give That's why it's called yeah. a show. You have to exactly. Show. So um, all of those things, skill set is in my classes. So that's the first class. So then the second class that they have to take is their artist critique. So I listen to their music, help them make music better, um, help them to understand the narrative of making music. We put together the long list of things that they're gonna do in their city and locally to drop that single to make it successful. So a long list of things, this is how you're gonna do, this is their formula for dropping a single successfully every time, getting that single into everyone's ears every time. So then we put together the long list of things that they're gonna do before they drop their album in order to make it successful. And so that's the the um, the second class. So once they got this long, at, once they have, once they know the business in the first class, the whole business, and they got all their paperwork together, then the second class, they under, they got this long list of things that they need to do, the plan of execution. Then the third part is them just executing. Right. So we offer them help, and we charge them for the help that we give them doing and executing the long list of things that they need to do before they drop their album in order to make it successful. Exactly. Well, man, I always end all my shows with any advice for the kids, man, because they coming up, they living reckless in Baton Rouge, Texas, wherever they at, man. They, they wildin', man. Any advice for the kids, man? Chicken and Watermelon DJ, your boy Earl, a wise man told me, so now I'm telling you is that wherever you decide to go in life, that's where you're going to be. When you wake up in the morning, you got 24 hours. Someone is spending that 24 hours becoming a lawyer. Someone is spending that 24 hours going to school to become a doctor. Someone is actually spending that 24 hours being a lawyer or a doctor 
someone is making millions of dollars in the rap game and trying to make millions of dollars in the rap game and actively selling music, you might be waking up going to a job that pays you minimum wage. You might wake up and go to a job that's paying you at six figures. Whatever and wherever you decide to go in life, that's where you're going to be. If you want millions and millions of dollars, you go do things that's going to go get you millions of dollars. You wake up every morning and put your body and take the steps in order to do those things. And everyone that you know has money, they went and did the things in order to, they did different things than you. They got up and went and took steps to make those things happen. And you can actually have everything that everyone else has. You can have that big multi-million dollar house. You right. just have to do the exact same steps that that person did in order to make it. I could be a DJ, it. your boy Earl got disconnected, man. But uh, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. You just chopped it up, man. You kept it a stack. You dropped some gems, some jewels. Y'all definitely go check him out, man. Get at him, hit his DM. Uh, this is the Keep It 1000 podcast, and I'm your host, Kel100. Y'all stay tuned for the next episode. It do not stop. It do not stop with me. Keep it 1000. Keep it 1000. Keep it a stack. Keep it a stack. We kill 1000. Kill 1000. It's deeper than rap. It's deeper than rap. It's the Keep It 1000 podcast. It do not stop. It's the Keep It 1000 podcast. It do not stop with me.